Have you ever considered what happens when you multiply two odd numbers? For instance, if I multiply the odd numbers 3 times 7, the result is another odd number, 21. Can we generalize this rule with all odd numbers? Can this rule be proven? Strike the subscribe button below. Get your mind focused. We will have the answers to these questions in 4, 3, 2, 1. It's true that multiplying two odd numbers will result in an odd number. As a matter of fact, multiplying a bunch of odd numbers together will result in an odd answer. In mathematics, we state this idea by saying that the set of odd numbers is closed under multiplication. Specifically, 5 times 9 equals 45 which is an odd number, and 9 times 11 equals 99, which is also odd. Now, to prove a conjecture slash idea such as odd times odd takes more than just listing a bunch of examples. By the way, a quick note on closure or a set being closed. Notice that the set of odd numbers is not closed under addition. For instance, if we take an odd number and we add it to another odd number, it ends up actually giving us an even number. Okay, let's prove the closure under multiplication in general. The proof begins by defining what an odd number is. For our case, we actually are going to use odd natural numbers. What I mean by that is we're not going to look at fractions and our numbers aren't going to be negative at all. So again, to restate, our numbers aren't going to be fractions. It actually works if you use fractions as well, but just to, uh, for simplicity, we're going to state the fact that no fractions, no negative numbers. Okay, so now, and they're all counting, and they're all counting numbers. Now we need an expression that represents all odd numbers. Now, if we think about it, an odd number is always one away from an even number. In other words, take an even number and subtract one. Presto, you have an odd number. Here are some uh, illustrations of that, just with a couple numbers. But I mean, this works for every single number that you can think of. I'm looking right here at 8 minus 1. So I have an even number. I subtract 1, I get 7, which is my odd number. And I look at 26 minus 1, another even number, 26 minus 1, and it equals 25, another odd number. This means if we can create an expression to get an even number, with the, uh, then we can probably subtract 1. Not probably, in reality, we can subtract 1 from that even number and we would have our odd number. So we will represent an even number with the expression 2x, where x is any counting number. So where x is any counting number that we can think of, so counting numbers is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, running off to infinity. So 2x, where x is any counting number, again, x could be 1, 2, 3, 4. So take any counting number, put it in here, multiply it by 2, and do a little uh, experiment in your head. Just pick any number, multiply by 2, it's going to be even. Whether you pick even or odd, once you multiply by 2, it's still even. And we're just showing an illustration of uh, when we take 2 and we multiply by the first number, 1, we get 2, which is even. And then we take 2, multiply by the second number, 2, which is gets us a result of another even, which is 4. And then 2 times the 3 equals 6, which is another even. And, of course, this will dot, 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 because this will go on to get us all the even 
numbers that are positive and uh, again non-fractional. So now our problem is how do we make it odd? Well, we already discussed that. All we have to do is subtract one. So let me go back to the whiteboard. We're going to subtract one real quickly. Use the eraser. All right, so we change our formula. We're going to change our formula to 2x minus 1. Now, x is still representing all the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And here we just illustrate if we stick in the first number, 2 times 1, but we minus 1, we'll get our first odd number. If we stick in the second number, 2 times 2, and then subtract 1, so 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1, which equals 3, which is our second odd number. And then 2 times the third number here is 6 minus the 1. 6 minus 1 is 5, which is my next odd number. So what we've illustrated here, and if you, you know, you don't, you know, you haven't become a believer yet, make sure, you know, you keep the list going. Do four, two times four is eight, minus one to get your seven, and see that the list is, would ultimately develop all odd numbers possible. Now, for our proof, we need another odd number because it's an odd times an odd. Well, this is illustrating, if I pick any random X here, then what I'm ultimately getting is some random odd number. Well, I need another expression to represent the other odd number. Well, the other odd number is gonna be represented by 2y minus one, where you choose randomly y as a counting number. Y is 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. Now, could X equal Y? It could be if we randomly choose it and we happen to pick X is, you know, 27 and we happen to pick Y is 27, then it's just one, one odd number times another odd number. But uh, more likely than not, there, you know, X will be a different number and Y will be a different number. So to finish the proof, we need a little more board. So just give me a few seconds here, wipe the board out. Because what we need to do is we need to ultimately take the quantity of 2x minus 1 times the quantity of 2y minus 1, representing, in general, two odd numbers being multiplied times each other, and see what happens. Heidi von Helmholtz here. If you haven't picked up your copy of 50 Mathematical Ideas You Really Need to Know, you can get it now by striking the link below. All right, so now what we promised was we're going to take, in general, one odd number, 2x minus 1, and then I'm going to multiply it times the quantity of another odd number, which is 2y minus 1. So let's take a look at that. 2x minus 1, the quantity of that whole expression, and then 2y minus 1. Okay, so uh, you're going to have to dig back into your algebra a little bit, or if you haven't had algebra yet, then, um, you know, just hang on, listen to what I'm saying, and, you know, take it on faith at, at this point. So ultimately what we have to do is we have to do distribution. When The way distribution works, just a, a quick review, is I take the number in here and... I have to multiply times all the, take this number and multiply times all the numbers in there. And then I go to my next number in here and I have to multiply times all the numbers in there. And I have to keep in mind that a negative times a positive will equal a negative number and a negative times a negative will ultimately equal a positive number. So let's do that. We're taking the, the 2x times the 2y 
And we're ultimately, we're going to get 4xy. That's our result for that. Then I take the 2x and I multiply times the negative 1. Remember, a positive times a negative equals a negative. So I'm going to get a minus 2x. And then I'm going to take this number and multiply it times the 2y. So it's negative 1 times 2y, which is negative 2y. And then a negative 1 times a negative 1, a negative times a negative is a positive, and we'll end up with a plus 1. Now the next step in this proof is that I'm going to have to do a little bit of factoring. So the way we're going to look at this factoring, we're going to have to do factoring by grouping because there's a 2 in this first part, there's a 2 in the second part and the third part, but 2 doesn't go into 1. So one's going to be left out of our factoring. So we factor out a 2. And if I factor, I'm going to get 2xy. Of course, we're going to check our factoring after we're all done. But if I factor, there's a 2 in there. So it's going to be a minus x. And there's a 2 in there. So there's going to be a minus y. And since 2 doesn't go in to 1, the 1 is outside the quantity. All right, so now I'm going to double check my factoring as I always do. No matter how far along you are in mathematics, you always, you know, you always double check yourself just in case. So I multiply 2 times 2xy. Well, 2 times 2xy is 4xy. It gets me back up here, so I know I've done that correctly. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. So I once I get that up top, then I know I've done that part correctly. And then 2 times negative y is negative 2y. And then I'm adding 1 at the end, which I did nothing to. I didn't multiply by 2. And when I multiply this through, I, I get back to the statement before. So I know that I've done my factoring correctly. Now, uh, there, this is where a little bit of faith comes in because we don't want to have a, a side proof or a lemma or um, where we have to prove that this is ultimately going to be a counting number. But if you take any x, remember your x is any number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth, off to infinity, and y, any y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, off to infinity. If you multiply those two, you're going to ultimately get another number, may or may not be odd, but it's just going to be another counting number. So your result will be a counting number. And if I multiply that by 2, okay, it'll be even, but it doesn't matter. It's just another counting number. And if you subtract x and then you subtract y, all of this together, we'll just call junk, but all this junk together will result in a counting number. So all this junk in the quantity will just be another counting number. And with a little faith, I'll, I'll just tell you the result will be a counting number that's positive and not a fraction, of course. So taking on faith that that's true, then really on the outside here, I'm just multiplying 2 times some counting number. Well, 2 times some counting number we already know is even. doesn't matter what the counting number is. If you multiply by 2, it's going to be even. And then if I add 1 to that, that's going to be an odd number, proving that an odd times an odd is equal to an odd. Or said more eloquently, that... The set of odd natural numbers is closed under multiplication. Now, if you still have doubts, try some random x's and y's and then review the proof once more. Don't forget to strike the like button before you check out.
and make comments below on other numerical patterns you've noticed. There are many mathematical patterns in this universe and our curious nature as members of Alien Institute will be to hunt them down one by one and organize the world in which we live. Do not forget strike the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of the video screen.